Are the Docker containers running slow on your Synology NAS? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the NVMe drives on your Synology NAS as storage volumes for Docker. This should work on any Synology NAS, including those that came out before 2023, as well as any non-Synology branded NVMe drives. Let's begin. Welcome back everyone, Anand here from Smart Home Beginner. You may be familiar with my Docker and traffic guides for Synology. I have a Synology NAS from 2018. It still works great, the DS918 Plus model. I like it because it runs Docker and it also runs Docker Compose. The speed of the Docker containers are limited by the speed of the hard disk drives that are in it. You can get around that a little bit by using the M2 drives at the bottom for caching, but unfortunately, those two drives are limited only for caching. You cannot create a storage volume out of them, so you can put your Docker app and the Docker containers on them. Synology did change course in 2023 and released two different models that support creation of storage volumes using the NVMe SSD drives that are at the bottom of the chassis, but the models that came out before 2023 are out of luck. In addition, you are limited to using only Synology branded NVMe drives for the creation of storage volumes. Here I have a Synology branded NVMe drive, 400 gigabytes for about $150. And then on the right, I have the famous Samsung 980 Pro 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD drive for about half the cost of the Synology drive. Let's forget about the cost for a minute. I bought my Synology 918 Plus model for $550 back in 2019. I don't want to upgrade to the latest model just to be able to create storage volumes. Fortunately, there is a workaround to it. You can create storage volumes out of the M2 drives in models that came out before 2023. In addition, in models 2023, and later, you can use non-Synology branded M2 drives to create storage volumes. But please note that this method is not officially supported by Synology. Therefore, you cannot reach out to them for any support. And in addition, this may void your warranty. With that disclaimer, I do want to mention that after moving my Docker and Docker containers to a NVMe SSD storage volume, the performance of my Docker containers went up like crazy. So let's see how to do that. All the commands that I will be using in this tutorial are in the description below. You can also find them on the guide on my website, smarthomebeginner.com, so check it out. Okay, here I am on my Synology NAS with the four hard disk drives and two cache drives. The two cache drives are not used anymore. They were used for cache. Now I'm gonna convert them to storage volume. First, I need to delete any partitions that are on it. So I will have to SSH into my Synology first. So here I am SSH into my Synology NAS. First, I want to see the partitions that are available. So here, there you go. There are several partitions here, three on each of the two cache drives. First, we need to delete in all the existing partitions. So for this, we're gonna use the fdisk command, fdisk slash dev slash nvme01n1, which is the first partition. I don't know what command to run, so I press M and it gives me the list of commands that I can use. And here we're going to use D for delete a partition and it autom automatically shows me the number of partitions. I go through one at a time, number one, and then I two, and number three. And then finally, I will have to write these changes to the, the drive. So I press W and enter, and this should write the changes to the drive and delete all the partitions. Okay, let's verify. So fdisk-l slash dev slash nvme 0 and one and that shows me no partitions let's use the ls command to make sure that there are fewer partitions than what is shown above at the top of the screen so ls slash dev slash nvme star gives me fewer partitions than what's shown above so we're good to go now we're going to repeat the same process for the other m2 drive so fdisk slash dev slash nvme1 and one and we're gonna go 
hit D to delete partitions and go through one, two, and then three, finally, and write the changes to the disk. There we go, W, and we're good to go. We're gonna use the ls command one more time to just make sure that all the partitions have been deleted. So ls slash dev slash nvme star gives me no partitions left on this, these two drives. So we're good to go. One thing I forgot to mention is that at the beginning of this command line operation, I did become root already, but didn't show that in this video. So I'm gonna do that one more time so you can see how to gain root access. So we're gonna go sudo dash i and type in our password and we there we go. We have now root privileges on our Synology NAS. Next, what we're gonna do is once again, check to make sure that there are no partitions on our two NVMe SSDs. So fdisk list slash dev slash NVMe 0, 1, 0, and one, no partitions. So the same command now with NVMe 1 and N1, no partitions. So we're good to go there. Synology uses special partitioning. So we'll have to use a specific command to create some new partitions. So sino partition dash dash part slash dev slash NVMe 0 N1. And we're gonna add the number 12. Don't ask me why, it's just the way it's done. Um, now this should create the necessary partitions that Synology requires. Now we're gonna do, so basically we created three partitions. So if we go ls slash dev slash nvme star, this is gonna show the three partitions on the first drive nvmb zero. Now we're gonna do the same thing for nvme one. So nvme one and one, 12, and we are creating three new partitions there. So now if we go ls slash dev slash nvme star, this should show all the partitions now we have on the two nvme SSDs. Next, if you use the fdisk list command, we should again see the three partitions for each drive. So fdisk dash l slash dev slash nvme zero n1, this should show the three partitions and we do the same thing for the other drive, we will see the three partitions. So nvmb1 and one, and this shows the three partitions. So we're good to go. Next, we have to check the existing RAID arrays on our Synology NAS. So we're gonna do that using the cat proc md stat command, and this shows the existing arrays on our Synology NAS. What is really important is the md number. So we have zero, one, three, two, and six, four and five are missing, but just to be safe, we're gonna pick the next number seven to create a new array of our NVMe SSDs. So we do that using mdadm dash dash create slash dev slash md7. And it, this is going to be a raid one, so dash dash level one, we're gonna use two devices, so raid dash, devices equal to number two. And then we're going to force the MDADM command to use this parameters that we are specifying. Then finally, we're gonna list the partitions that we wanna array. So slash dev slash NVMe. If you ever get confused, you can type in and just press the tab button to see what partitions are available. So in this case on drive number one, our NVMe zero, we see three partitions. We're gonna use the third one because the first two are used by Synology. So NVMe zero one, N one, P three, and we're gonna specify the same partition on the second drive, NVMe one, N one, P three, to complete the, the RAID create command. So this is gonna ask you if you wanna continue. So we say yes. And this is gonna start building the RAID array of the third partition. Here it says array slash dev slash md7 started. And we can check the status of the process using the cat proc md stat command as we saw before. Here at the top, you can see MD7 rate array is being created. It's about 1.3% done. So we'll have to let this continue and finish fully. 
So let's check again just to be sure it's continuing to increase. So we do that again and we see right now we're about 2.2% which is great. So we're moving forward. So let's let it continue and we'll come back here when it's done. Now it's done. So we're, we don't have the percentage anymore. It's created, it says active. So we're good to go. The rate array is done. The next step we have to do is to actually use the array partition to create a new BTRFS partition. So we're going to do that using MKFS BTRFS dash F slash dev slash MD7, the rate array that we just created. And this is going to create a new BTRFS partitions using that rate array that we just created. This should take just a few minutes and we should be back just any time now. So, and, and there we go. So we have a new BTRFS partition ready to use. We will have to reboot our Synology for the hardware to see the new array partition. I have now rebooted my Synology and here I am on, um, on the storage manager and I can still see the same two cache devices, not initialized, not, it was exactly how it appeared before, except now we've erased it, we've created the required partitions and we've made the array. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into volume and here at the top you can see there is one available pool that is detected, but it's not active because we'll have to assemble it. And for this, as the instructions on the screen say, you will have to online assemble by clicking the three dots. And that's exactly what we're going to do here now. Three dots at the top, online assemble. So there's nothing really you have to configure here because it's all already pre-configured. It's a RAID 1 array with data protection, cache 1 device, cache 2 device, apply. It'll take a few minutes. Um, and there you go the storage pool 2 volume number 6 is being assembled right now in a few seconds there it's done there you go our storage volume is now ready to use and it's btrfs now we're ready to install docker into this newly created storage volume so for that we're going to go into package manager search for docker and we're going to hit install let it download for a second there. There you go, we have it. Next, here we choose the newly created volume, which is on the NVMe SSD and hit next. And just hit done after that. And this is gonna create, this is gonna install Docker on the NVMe SSD. So on paper, it should run faster. And in my experience, it does run faster. So here we have Docker now and it opens and everything is good to go we're going to check something here when you install docker docker also creates a shared folder so we're going to go into control panel and we're going to hit shared folders there you go so docker shared folder is already available and is installed on volume 6 we're going to install open file station and there you have it we have docker and it's em empty and it's ready to go that's it. We now have a shared volume that runs Docker and will host our Docker containers. And that's located on the NVMB SSD at the bottom of the Synology NAS. This should really help you run your Docker containers faster. They should be more responsive. For example, Plex runs and loads much faster from the NVMB SSDs than they did load from the hard disk drive previously for me. If you like this video, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell so you get notified when there are new videos. Otherwise, thank you very much and see you in my next video.